Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Hank Philippi Ryan, your host for this session. I'm quickly, I'm the USA Today bestselling author of novels like The First to Lie, 12 thrillers, The First to Lie, which just came out recently, and of The Murder List which just won the Anthony for best novel of the year. Thank you for your applause, darling, Jen McKinley. <laughs> Alexia Gordon, Alexia Gordon Wade mm -hmm. is a physician by day and an own voices mystery author by night. She took a hiatus from her day job to return to grad school where she says she discovered crime fiction and academia have a lot in common. So welcome to Alexia Gordon. Jennifer J. Chow, Jennifer Wade, great writes multicultural mysteries and fantastical young adult books. As Jennifer J. Chow, she writes a sassy cat mystery series. And as J.J. Chow, writes the Winston Wong cozy mystery series. Welcome, Jennifer. We're so glad you could be here. Thank you. Jen McKinley, yay, Jen is a New York Times bestselling and award-winning author of several, more than several cozy mystery and romance series, as well as standalone novels. She lives in sunny Arizona, she says, in a house overrun with kids, pets, and her husband's guitar. So feel free to ask her about that. Maybe you can get him to come in and play a little bit. Oh, <laughs> and <laughs> never and, leave. <laughs> yeah, well, and finally, uh, Lucy Burdett. Hi, Luce. Clinical psychologist Lucy Burdett, AKA Roberta Islip, has published 18 mysteries, including the latest in the Key West food critic series, The Key Lime Crime. Her books and stories have been shortlisted for the Agatha Anthony McCavity Awards, and she's a past president of Sisters in Crime, National Sisters in Crime. So welcome all, what a wonderful group, and we are thrilled that you are here tonight. So we'll start as always with a quick round of 20 or so questions. We have these fabulous que backroom question cards. Can you see how fancy they are? Karen had these made, very cool. And we'll ask you one question each in a row and then go around a couple times. Um, just quick little answers and they're Fun question. Jennifer Chow, what was your favorite book as a child? Oh, that's got to be Charlotte's Web. I just really liked the talking animals. <laughs> did you cry in Charlotte's Web? Did you cry? I did. And even in the beginning, you know, seeing the rent of the litter, Wilbur. <laughs> oh, even at the beginning, you cried at the beginning. That's <laughs> when you know it's going to be a sad <laughs> book, right? You yeah. cried at the beginning. Alexia, tough one, a little tough one. Do you read your reviews? I don't actually, I obsess over them if I read them. So I look at the stars, but I don't actually read the reviews themselves. I, I obsess. So it means something, but you don't want to see it. You get a lot of stars though. Yeah, but it, it, it amps up my anxiety. So <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I completely understand. Lucy, what was the name of your first pet? The first pet was a cat named Beautiful Rainbow. <laughs> Did you I name them? <laughs> I remember very well when my youngest sister was born, our grandmother came to stay with us and Rainbow had to stay in the basement, <laughs> which has scarred me. And the cat, I'm sure, yeah. as well. <laughs> okay, um, Jen McKinley, what book made you want to be a writer? Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. I read it when I was 12 and it made me fall in love with language. Have you read it since? Yes, I read it repeatedly. <laughs> That's about one of the only ones I will actually read over. You know, That's so interesting. I don't think I've ever, have, you, have the rest of you read Anne of Green Gables? Yes. Yes, Alexia, Jennifer, Lucy, have you? I never have. We well, honey, get on it. Yeah. <laughs> I read I the whole I, series, actually. I think I thought it would be sad, so I didn't, I didn't read it. Okay, Jennifer Chow, how long have you been writing? Um, well, I was gonna say all my life, <laughs> when I started <laughs> borrowing my dad's typewriter, uh, but I think seriously, probably 12 years. Seriously, how, what made you start? Um, I, I just, well, I had a break. Um, I was on maternity leave so that I had a break and kind of a break <laughs> and I thought you know what let me let me just try this because I've always wanted to do it and I just didn't really have time with my day job. Okay perfect well we're glad you did. Alexia is your desk tidy or messy? Tidy actually um, 
I do a lot of work at the kitchen table, which is not so tidy, but my desk is actually pretty tidy. <laughs> and has it always been like that? Yes, I, I, I like things compartmentalized in, in cute containers and jars and, and slots and things. Um, so I've, I've got lots of nice tidy containers, um, but they're, it's, it's pretty organized. <laughs> It's fun to buy those little containers. Jen McKinley, when do you feel the most creative? I am a mid shifter. I am most creative between two in the afternoon and about 10 o'clock at night. And so that's when you really work. Yeah, but the family wants to eat and stuff. It's so annoying. <laughs> so that's my, that's, best time. <laughs> that's my best time too. Yeah, actually, it's, kind of yeah. it's actually in China. I learned that from Sherry Thomas. She's a she's a two to ten, and oh, she okay. said it's called the mid shift in China. So I'm like, oh, oh I'm a mid shifter. So no, okay, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember <laughs> that. Lucy, do you have any hidden talents? Oh, hidden talents. I, I'm a pretty good cook. Oh, I I'm uh, the person who makes all the birthday cakes in the family. In fact, I have to make my own because everyone else is afraid. <laughs> that it won't be good or afraid that you'll criticize? I wouldn't criticize. The first one my husband ever made for me, I think the last also, he drew on it a tennis racket. It was a tennis party. And all the men at the party were so upset with him for raising the bar that time. Because <laughs> now they had to make cakes, pretty cakes as well. That's great. Tell him we said hi. And finally, Jennifer Chow, are you a morning person or a night person? Oh, I'm definitely a night person. I, I like to stay up. But I do write in the morning. So oh. maybe both. A little bit of each. A little bit of each. Depending on what it is, I guess. Right. Great. Night for fun and morning for writing. Oh, okay. That's a good motto. That's a good motto. So um, we do want to know quickly what books you are all reading. And we had, Karen and I had asked you in advance to think of something that you're reading right now that you love or that you've recently read, because all of us want to know this is all about building up your to be read pile. So tell us what, what book are you going to recommend? Alexia, let me ask you. I'm going to recommend Mexican, this is all background, sorry, Mexican <laughs> Gothic um, by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Um, there you go. It's, uh, I, am in, I am not finished it yet, uh, but it, I'm enjoying it because it's uh, very different. It, it combines the traditional um, Gothic suspense with uh, uh, Mexican heroine who is, is brave and bold and isn't just sitting around waiting for someone to rescue her. So it's, it's got a strong female protagonist combined with a, a spooky old house and a bunch of weird people. So it's perfect for this, this cold gray November weather. Wonderful. And Carol is saying Mexican Gothic is on my TBR pile. So yes, I've heard that that book is terrific and on mine too. Jenny Kinley, what about you? Ooh, I, can you see it? Uh, is the Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. It is fantastic. It's a ghost story. It's an amazing mystery. And um, it's two different time periods. So you've got 1982 and 2017. And you have a young woman who's trying to find out what happened to her aunt who disappeared while being the night desk clerk at the Sundown Motel in 1972. And it, I just have not been, I wasn't able to put it down. It was fantastic. Highly recommend. I remember I'm reading it too. And I remember one of the lines from it is the sundown motel looked like it was empty, but it wasn't. I know it's, it's so empty. creepy. It's so good. It's so <laughs> yeah. Jennifer Chow, how about you? What book would you recommend? Um, I'm recommending Kona Winden, Wins by Scott Kakawa and no glare, but I like it because it's uh, noir. It's got the noir flavor, but it's set in 1950s Hawaii, oh. and it features a Japanese American homicide detective, uh, fictional, but it's just got a really nice flavor, and it gives that background of Hawaii that I didn't know before. Wonderful. That sounds great. And finally, Lucy Burdett, what are you recommending? I am recommending, can you see this? Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Jen McKinley's Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! This is the most recent one, Buried to the Brim. I hope there's going to be more, Jen. But I've had a lot of trouble concentrating with reading since this stupid pandemic started. 
-hmm. So I need something that's light, but not slight and funny, which Jen does very well. And if you could get out of the country instead of uh, being here with our stupid politics, that's a plus too. So Jen hits all of those. Oh, thank you. Check and, there's out. and there's a dog show. Yeah. Oh, well, a dog show. That I mean, that is we hope you enjoyed that taste of what a backroom session is like. But more fun comes immediately afterward. That's when the audience is broken up into four breakout rooms, and each author, in turn, visits each room. We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like, because those relaxed face-to-face -face conversations between best-selling authors and readers are the hallmark of backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded, because what's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Mm -hmm.